Virginia Tech plays Villanova for the right to take on the winner of Georgia Tech and the Red Foxes of Marathon. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's four in a row for the seniors now. It's what we wanted to do all year long. We shot for this. was our goal from the beginning. And uh, we just, you got to be in it to win it, you know. And anything can happen once you get involved in the tournament now. Yeah, there was a little pressure. It was a little nerve-wracking. You know, we were sitting here watching it, and it took a long time. You know, commercial breaks and everything. And my stomach started to turn a little bit, you know. For a while, though, I didn't think we were going to get the bid, but we got it. I'm happy. Welcome to a very special edition of the Rolly Massimino Show. I'm Mark Wicker from the Philadelphia Daily News. We're live from the studio of Channel 57 in downtown Philadelphia. Rolly, today you found out you're going to your seventh straight NCAA tournament. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Mark. It is a very special day. I'm really proud of the players, my assistant coaches, and everybody that's a part of our great university. You're playing Virginia Tech on Thursday in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The winner of that game will play the winner of the Marist versus Georgia Tech game in the Southeast Regional. Yes, uh, Virginia Tech's an outstanding team, and... Uh, you know, they play very, very well, especially come tournament time. And if we get by them, we have, once again, the Yellow Jackets. If you get by them, you better root for Maris, Rolly. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> now, seven, what other teams have gotten in seven straight NCAA tournaments? Well, there's only been three other teams. They've been North Carolina, they've been Georgetown, Kentucky, and we're the fourth team. So we're in pretty good company. And that is a, that's quite a distinguished group. We'd like to congratulate the other Philadelphia teams. Yes. Drexel is playing Louisville Thursday in Ogden, Utah. St. Joseph's is playing Richmond on Friday in Syracuse, New York at the Carrier Dome. Syracuse mm -hmm. is playing there too, of course. Yeah. And Temple in Dayton, Ohio on Thursday. They'll be playing the Jacksonville Dolphins, the Sun Belt Conference champions. Yes, they all deserve a great deal of congratulations. Uh, St. Joe getting that six seed. Sometimes I wonder, probably uh, Sienna should have gotten a bit. Oh, that's right. Boy, you're going to get the win. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Harry <laughs> Booth said that. <laughs> I guess St. Joseph beating you, that was the reason they got such a high seat. No, they, they've done a great job. Jim Boyle and his kids deserve a great deal of credit. And I'm really proud to see four teams from the city of Philadelphia be represented in the NCAA. Now, you're playing Virginia Tech. You don't know much about them. No, I don't, really don't know other than they have a number one draft choice. I was with him when he was one of the Playboy Players of the Year, Dale Curry, superstar. Been averaging close to 35 the last five or six, hasn't he? That's right. We'll be back with a look at the Big East Tournament in just a moment. Great. Great. This is the Rolly Massimino Show with Rolly Massimino, coach of the national champion Villanova Wildcats, and Mark Wicker, sports columnist for the Philadelphia Daily News. Life's full of compromises, but not in my game. On the court, you can still give 100%. The Windsor Shirt Company is like that. You can't believe how much you're getting and how little you're paying. 50% less than department stores. Windsor refuses to compromise on style, on selection or quality. Why not be the best? Everybody loves a Windsor. On the road again, coach? Home game tonight. Can we talk about no car insurance? Sure. Your agency is? H.J. Thompson Insurance. Why an independent? Better policy options? That's one reason. Multiple driver discounts? Five more reasons. And for a sizable agency, they still treat you like family. That's my favorite reason. And because your agent keeps track of your record on the road? Not only that, he comes to all our home games. Raleigh, we're going to go to those NCAA pairings uh, later in the show. You just finished a Big East tournament that was kind of bittersweet for you. You played great one night. You didn't play so great the next night against St. John. Yes, you're right. It was a great, great tournament. Uh, Madison Square Garden, that's where it's all at, Mark. You know, I'm just now waking up. I took a few <laughs> naps during that tournament because there was oh. only one good game played in it, unlike those people in Greensboro that got I to see can't believe that. six tremendous basketball Oh, games. yes, there really was. Like, uh, who was sleepwalking today, by the way? That was, by the that same was probably the best game of the year, as you know. It was a tremendous game, and of course... The game last night was also a great game. Yeah, well, we're going to go to some Big East tournament scores and also the uh, some footage from your games up there in Madison Square Garden. I know that uh, you played Providence on Thursday night, and you you really played great in this game. You yeah, came I really did think we did. There's no question. Harold Jensen had a heck of a game. So did Harold Presley. Uh, the kids were really loose and relaxed. 
was a big game for us, by the way. This came at the end of probably the dullest day of basketball I've ever sat through, but at least you guys played hard. <laughs> Here he goes again. <laughs> Maryland, the fifth seed in the tournament, and they were sixth to the ACC. Well, how does it feel? Mind-boggling. How, does it how feel about that fast? Four, four teams in the tournament. The Big East had five, a big eight, had five tournaments. Well, you know, you have those kind of years. That happens. And you didn't have any more than the Sun Belt did either. So I don't guess the Big East is all that you've been saying it was. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's a situation where in some years some teams are good. All we want to do is mention, be mentioned in the same breath with, with the ACC, the Big Ten, now the Big Eight. Yeah, the Big By Eight. By the way, they're going to have problems, I have except for Kansas. Okay, here's Walter Berry. You saw enough of him. 29 points and 14 rebounds, and Walter Berry deservedly was named National College Player of the Year today. Yes, uh, he had a great game. I'll tell you what, he is deceivingly quick. He slashes, he's so cunning around the basket. It's, 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 it's strange, but he is some kind of player, Mark. You weren't pleased with the way Villanova approached this game. There's Dwight Wilbur who's been hurt. Villanova did not come out and play aggressively as they usually do. It appeared that they might have been thinking too much about losing to this team six straight times. Yes. Uh, we got ourselves back in the groove today, and especially with the NCAA bid, I think we're right there. I thought Kenny Wilson played well in a very tough situation, yes. Roy. Uh, Dwight Wilbur being hurt, he had to handle the load as a point guard alone. Yeah. There are the scores, Villanova winning by 12. You see these close games, 102 to 69, 87 to 68. You know, I, well, that was one of the, I needed some sleep and I got it on no, third. No, that's not really true. That's not really true. Now you comparatively look at the scores around the country, first round, Quite deceiving. Quite now, last deceiving. Last night's game was a tremendous game. Syracuse was ahead by 11 at the half. St. John's kept battling back, and uh, the Red Men, to me, are an amazing team. They really play they well. They sure are. They all play within their capabilities, and that's why they got one of the number one seeds. They don't get in foul trouble. You know, they play five guys, and they've only had one starter get in foul trouble all season because mm -hmm. they play so intelligently, they know when to go after it and when not to. Yes, they do, but I think they foul a little bit more than people think. <laughs> well, I mean, they really come at you. And Mickey course, didn't even work the game, so you can't complain. No, about I did not complain at all. We, we lost the game. We didn't play as well as St. John's. Of course, St. John's was a fifth-ranked team, and now the NCAA committee certainly feels that they're one of the top four teams in the nation. Well, they really deserved it. And how about Marco Baldi from Milan, Italy? Yes. Scoring six big points during their comeback yes. last night. If there's one thing this league needs, it's not another Italian guy. <laughs> they need more Pearl Washingtons, though, I'll tell you that. Hey, Pearl was terrible wasn't for he? two nights, but last night he played well. MVP the whole tournament. Uh, that wasn't on my ballot. Well, I'll tell you what, I think he's a great player. He's my man. I, I just think he's going to be a great pro, and he's going to carry, if anyone's going to carry Syracuse, it's going to be Dwayne Washington into the national championship round. Next segment, we'll give you what you've been waiting for, the NCAA pairings from the upcoming tournament. We'll be back in just a moment. Basketball fans know that a player's feet can tell you how good he is. That's the key to his speed and quickness. But a player's feet can also tell you how smart he is by the basketball shoes he wears. If he's smart enough to go to Villanova, he's smart enough to wear these. Puma Sky LX, built and designed for control, stability, and performance. And of course, winning. Pumas, check out a pair where you buy athletic shoes. Hey kids, interested in improving your game or just having fun? Come to the Roly Massimino basketball camps this summer. You don't have to be an all-star, just have the desire to play and learn from some of the greats in basketball. There's individual instruction, drills, and game time every day. For more information on the Rolly Massimino basketball camps, call 215-645-4140. That's 215-645-4140. Hi, I'm John DuPont with Triathlon, one of the nation's fastest growing sports. And with me today is Ken Gala, a triathlete from Westchester. Even though the sport of triathlon is relatively new, I've been involved with it for quite a few years now. The support I've received from Team Foxcatcher has enabled me to compete against many of the world's best triathletes. If you're interested in learning more about this exciting sport, pick up the March issue of Triathlete Magazine with John DuPont on the cover. This is a Villanova Basketball Championship Fundamental. Brought to you by Shanahan's Express, providing overnight express service since 1924. Hi folks, this evening we're going to talk about the fun part of the game, and that is shooting the basketball. I'm here tonight 
with my man Dwight Wilber, who's one of the better shooters on our basketball team. In doing so, let's demonstrate, Dwight, exactly how to do it. There are probably four key points in shooting the ball. Basically, once again, his eyes are glued directly to the basket. He's aiming to put the ball right up over that front rim. The second part are his knees. Once again, knee flex position. The third part is his release. I want you to shoot a few, Dwight, to see how we release the basketball. He releases and now the fourth point is his follow through. Watch his hand. His right hand is ending up like a swan as he releases the ball. Oh my God, I didn't think you could make that many, Dwight. Good job. I don't know if Dwight Werber is going to be able to play in the NCAA tournament because of a knee injury, but 64 teams are going to play in the tournament beginning on Thursday. The pairings were announced today. Many of you did not get to see them because of our mayor being on TV. Rolly, you should have been on TV. You had a better year than the mayor did. I don't know why you weren't on. <laughs> well, he sort of preempted all of us, but uh, I think he was well deserved. Now we're going to go to the. Uh, we're going to show you the pairings region by region. Here's the Greensboro situation. Duke will play Mississippi Valley State. Old Dominion will play West Virginia. Those two will play each other on the weekend. Then Virginia plays DePaul. I don't know how DePaul got in. I guess it's because they beat St. John's, really. Yeah. And uh, here's my upset pick for that region, Northeastern against Oklahoma. Yes, uh, that'll be very, very interesting, that, that bottom bracket. But, of course, you know, one never knows. How about this one at Syracuse? St. Joe's plays Richmond. Richmond, a team earlier in the year, they've been injured a little bit. I would think the Hawks would win that game. Indiana playing the highest scoring team in the country, Cleveland State. Navy, That'll be about half that score. Navy will play Tulsa. Navy, a team with Dave Robinson, the great center. Syracuse playing Brown. Syracuse playing in the Carrier Dome. I don't know how they get away with it. I mean, now they play Navy Tulsa win it, and after that, I mean, they're a walk to the regions. They just play halfway decent, all at the Carrier Dome. That's a question of the rich getting richer. But, uh, of course, the Hawks, I think they'll beat Richmond. And I, the game with them in Indiana, the way the Hawks played the last time I saw them. Yes, they're in a pretty, pretty good, good bracket. They're in a pretty good bracket. Here's your bracket, Baton Rouge with Purdue, a well-coached team playing at LSU. Memphis State playing against Ball State. In your bracket, Virginia Tech Villanova, the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech playing Marist. Uh, Marist, one of the three NCAA teams that you beat this year. <laughs> well, that's true. Georgetown, Maryland, and yeah. Marist. Yeah. But how many got it in that we play? Uh, several more than Several that. more. A lot more than several more. But here we go with Charlotte. Kentucky playing Davidson. Western Kentucky playing Nebraska. If Western Kentucky plays Kentucky, the whole state of Kentucky will be in Charlotte that night. That's Alabama right. against Xavier, coached by your old assistant Pete Gillen. I think that's another possible upset. No way. Okay. Thank you. And there's Mitch Bonaguro's Fairfield team playing Illinois. I don't, think, that, that I don't think that's going to be an know. upset. No, I don't know. Probably not. Okay, here we go to Dayton, Kansas, playing North Carolina A&T. The Temple Owls will play Jacksonville. Temple, for the third straight year, bracketed with a top seed in a region. I don't think John likes that too much, but at least well, he got in. Well, that's what happens. Eight and nine plays the top, top seed. Seven and ten plays the second seed. We go to Minneapolis. Jim Valvano's North Carolina State Wolfpack playing Iowa. Notre Dame plays Arkansas Little Rock. That could be an interesting game if Notre Dame plays State. Iowa State plays Miami of Ohio. Their great player, Ron Harper. That's a possible upset. Michigan, which overwhelmed Indiana Saturday, yes. played Akron. Did you see the five on nothing fast break Michigan yes. ran in that yes. game? Yes. How did Notre Dame get the third seed? Because That's they, incredible. they played, they had a pretty good year, Rowan. Yes, they sure did. Not the third seed. Georgetown gets the fourth seed. Here we are in Ogden, Utah, UAB against Missouri, a team that beat Villanova in Hawaii. North Carolina Tar Heels, crippled and battered as they are, are going to somehow oh go out gosh. and play Utah. Uh, let's hope they can get the, by Utah in that game. Bradley, Tommy Massimino's team playing UTEP. They got seated seventh, and I was surprised by that. Big surprise. Louis Louisville plays Drexel in the other one. And if Bradley wins, they play Louisville or Drexel winner. Well, I know who that's going to be, I think. Be St. St. John's plays Montana State. The winner will play Auburn in Arizona. Lute Olson's Pac-10 champions doing a great job. Maryland with Lenny Bias plays Pepperdine, and the winner of that game plays Vegas in northeast Louisiana. Maryland and Vegas, now that's going to be interesting. Yes, that yes, that should be. But once again, it's Luke Karnasek's year. That's a pretty good region for them, by that's the way. That's a great region. you got to like the way those six-seated Maryland Terps played in that ACC tournament. Just shows you the balance. And they get the fifth seed. You know what that means, folks? That means that they range from 17 to 20. Right. They haven't been ranked all year. They played the toughest but, schedule in the country. Where'd that come from, by the way? I think that was all media hype, by the way, on the part of you and your gang. Well, I think it says something for the ACC. They're fifth seeded in that region, but they were sixth seeded in their own That's conference. incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> Rolly, the tournament is 
very big. We've, we've argued before on whether it's too big, but these teams are going to play on their home sites. For instance, if Georgia Tech gets by Villanova and whoever else they have to play down there, they may, have to, they may be playing in Atlanta, Atlanta in the regional. That's not really fair. Well, you know, that's the same way with Syracuse. That's not as bad because Syracuse is starting out at Syracuse. And Kansas ends up out there. They're playing in, uh, Kansas City. Yes, yes. We have a conference breakdown. We show you the teams that are going to be uh, in the tournament from the different conferences, the ACC and the Big Ten leading, the Big Eight. There's the Big East in fourth place where it ought to be with the SCEC <laughs> and the Sun Belt. The Atlantic Ten. Can't have any complaints from Atlantic Ten people this year, folks. they got three teams in there along with the Metro. Well, you realize that that comprises or makes up 32 teams of the 64, just those eight, eight conferences. Well, I think when you play in a tough conference, you deserve something like that. Oh, here we go. For the first time, we get four in, but we'll give you six. We'll give you six. I was very disappointed Clemson didn't get it. Okay, Villanova recently in the NCAA <laughs> tournament. You see what they did last year. Every year, you win at least one game. And the yes. final eight, uh, four times there, I think that's a record that can stack up against anyone. Well, hopefully, thank you, Mark. I, hopefully that we can uh, get to the second round. If, if we get to the second round, one never knows even though it could be the Yellow Jackets. You change your whole, whole deal when you get in the playoffs. You don't, you don't scream at them anymore. You're real relaxed. Yes, Team yes. plays confidently. The philosophy is completely different. Uh, we got ourselves together early on this afternoon. We didn't know where we were going, but once we got in, we got ourselves together, had a little bit of a meeting, and now I think we're ready to go on our way. We've already gotten seven films on Virginia Tech, so hopefully our minds can be put together in the right, right vein and go on and win that first round game. Unlike last year, no 45 second clock, or actually there is a 45 second clock in the tournament. So the tournament might be the way the regular season was as far as the favorites winning. Yes, but again, the five minute mark down to the end will be a very, very crucial stage of the game. It will be low scoring games. I don't think Cleveland State's going to score 100 points. I don't think Syracuse is going to score 100 points other than maybe the first round against Brown. But once we get into this thing, I think the scores are going to be somewhat compact only because people are nervous and scared because it's only one and done. And you're playing in a strange atmosphere. You don't have your people there. It's a totally different thing. We'll be back with more and a look at Virginia Tech Villanova's first round opponent in just a moment. Welcome back to the Rolly Massimino Show. I feel like Ted Koppel here because we have a special guest yes. right here in this box. We have Jim Valvano, the coach of the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Rolly, say hello. Jimmy, what? congratulations. You too, coach. I'm really, really happy for you. What do you think of your first draw? I think they got it in for the Italians this year. They don't <laughs> like us winning. They put us in tough brackets. Huh? They, they sure did. Oh, boy. You got any information on Iowa? <laughs> I just, I'm just calling George, find out whether we're going to wear suits or warm-up jackets. <laughs> huh? Yeah, George Rattling wears that warm-up suit. That's right. Best, doesn't well, why don't you wear a warm-up suit? That's what I think I'm going to do. I tell you, they're, you know, they're tough ball club. They're young like we are. Very similar ball club to us, Rob. They're a very young basketball team. Their leading <laughs> scorer is a freshman. Yes. And, uh, it's, it should be a little ball game. I know that our packet, if, should we get by that, we've probably got another game. And should we get by that, there's Michigan. Yes. We've got Kansas uh, there, too. So that's a tough pack. And I know you've got to go up against... Uh, uh, we're, we're going against a uh, pretty fine team in Virginia Tech. Hey, Del Curry is the best. Uh, I haven't seen a better uh, guard in the country. Is that right, huh? He can really stroke it, can he, Jim? One of the best. One of the best. What do you think of the overall seedings, Jimmy? You know, it's, it's, it's hard to say. You know, I, I take a look and... You know, we, we, didn't, we didn't finish up very strong. I was really pleased that we were ranked, uh, you know, six. Uh -huh. But Iowa, I think it's a pretty good club, is 11th. You yes. know, and uh, so I don't know. I think it, it was pretty tough uh, to do, and we're just happy to, you're happy to be, be in it again. I'm going to let you talk to Mark Wicker because... He's one of your guys, by the way, a North Carolina graduate. Well, Jimmy, as we know, you're one of the many teams from the ACC that could have won the Big East this year. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, when you look at the NCAA tournament, you had a team that won a couple of years ago with uh, senior guards, a good big man, experience all around. Who's a dark horse in this tournament if you look at it? Holy cow, that's, that's a tough one. You know, I think what you said, Mark, though, is, is so important. I haven't really looked at it in depth yet, but there's a club out there that is just as you pointed out, has veterans on it that people are overlooking. You know, when we won it, when Rollins Club won it, you know, people tended to overlook us, and yet we had very veteran teams. You know, Rollins Club had gone to the final eight on uh, several occasions, and, you know, my club was, 
in your dominance. If I haven't looked at it that closely yet, but I guarantee you, just as you pointed out, there's somebody out there that's got a lot of vets on it. But even though that's been the case in the past, you know, there's only been a sleeper. This year, although there are no super teams, that's right. I think that Duke and Georgia Tech and, uh, uh, you yeah. know, people like that, St. John's, are, are very, very strong basketball teams. Thank you, Jimmy. We appreciate your time. Thanks very much and good luck. Thanks, Jim. All right, Ralph. Well, we had a film crew out at Villanova today to see the Wildcats celebrate their tournament bid, and we'd like to show it to you right now. That's Long Beach right. and Ogden. Right here. Stevie, right. right. you guys got the Southeast. That'll be the top group. Well, there's a lot of things that we do that other teams don't. Uh, again, we're family, and we like to have the family together in good and bad times, and we, we hope that this was going to be a good, fun time. I guess you say what can make tell you it's all the kids the kids worked very hard I mean you've heard that expression before but this team worked very hard again uh, they dedicated themselves to getting back into the tournament and they accomplished that uh, for our team to win 22 regular season games it took supreme efforts by everyone and I think the closeness that this team uh, got last year in winning the championship carried over I think the confidence that they got last year in winning the championship carried over well fellas Four years ago, you'd think we'd have four consecutive ones? I did. did you? <laughs> I didn't. After I got you four guys, I don't know whether or not uh, we had that kind of a shot. But these guys, I think you did a, just a super job. We're part of going to Southwest. We're going down south. Yeah, we should get... Uh, we well, get this the big guy here too, right? Why? Yeah, he's right. part he of the thing. He, really, he used to be here. He used to be here. Well, it's great. I'm sure you guys are really excited. Dwight. Think maybe we'll get a couple of jumpers out of you before the end? Of course, I'll be ready. Okay, well, guys, again, I want to publicly thank you. Great job. Thank you. Well, that was Dwight Wilbur. First, I guess we ought to know if he's going to play or not. Well, he's not going to play on Thursday, and uh, hopefully we get by the first round. He might be ready for the Saturday game, but uh, he's struggling right now, Mark. So that puts a lot of pressure on Kenny Wilson. Yes, it does, and uh, we're going to try to use RC at times just to spell Kenny a little bit. Uh, and use Mark Plansky as the second guard and, and if need be put Harold Jensen back in there at that spot. But RC did a very, very good job by the way. Yes, I thought he did too. Yeah, I mean he didn't make many mistakes. He didn't do a lot of things, you know, that, that, that well, but he hung in there, got the ball inside and he relieved Kenny and kind of proud of him. Virginia Tech played Michigan a one-point game. They beat Memphis State when Memphis State looked like they were going to be number one. Yes. They have probably, as Jim Valvano said, the best outside shooter from the longest range in the country in Del Curry, and they have some big people also. Yes, yes, they really do. Uh, and I understand uh, they struggled towards the end of February, but they're capable of really exploding. Uh, thank God we're going to Baton Rouge. I don't know how many fans because when you go to Blacksburg, Virginia, Virginia, you would know as well as I, that, that's a difficult place to play. They never lose there. No, but not think, very uh, often. Haystack no. Calhoun and Man Mountain <laughs> Dean are the referees during most of those games. <laughs> I don't think one of your guys can win down there either, by nah, the way. Well, they don't play there very yeah, often. They sure don't. <laughs> Old Dino don't travel there very, very often. They, they, they beat Virginia, in fact, uh, in Roanoke, which is right next door, by, by 18, 18 in December. By so, 18. Uh, they are a very fine team. You know, they play Louisville all the time. They play Memphis State. Yes. They have a couple of big people. They have a 6'9 center named Bobby Beecher, who is an outstanding passer. They have a freshman guard also. Named Johnny right? Fort, Fort right. who uh, has done a good job. They, of course, like we say, Memphis State was going to be ranked number one. It right, came right after Carolina lost at Virginia. Uh -huh. Memphis State played in Blacksburg. If they'd won that game, they would have been number one. Yes. And Virginia Tech really laid it on them. Yes, yes. Uh, it's going to be an interesting game. Hopefully, with our multiples, we can get ourselves into the changing style of play. They, we've never played uh, Virginia Tech since I've been to Villanova, so it ought to be kind of an interesting game, and okay. we're going to try to use the multiples. Okay, live television here in downtown Philadelphia. Thank you very much, Jim Valvano. For Rolly Massimino, this is Mark Wicker. See you next week on the Rolly Massimino Show. Really fun. It was great. The Rolly Massimino Show has been brought to you by Puma USA. Puma, your word for quality. And the 7-Up Bottling Company of the Delaware Valley.
headquarters every morning.